All right, here we're going to have a little discussion on what are termed bond enthalpies, also known as bond dissociation energies, and it's simply the amount of energy it takes to break a bond. So it turns out that when you break a bond, it requires energy, so those are exothermic. And when you make a bond, the exact opposite, it's therefore releases energy and is exothermic. So when you see a bond enthalpy then, like this NH bond value right here, that means it takes 391 kilojoules per mole of break to break an NH bond. Whereas if you make an NH bond, it would actually release that much. Now one thing to note about these bond enthalpies is they're only ever average values. So it turns out the breaking an NH bond doesn't always take exactly 391 kilojoules. That's kind of an average value. It might be slightly more, or slightly less in a different molecule or something like that, or from molecule to molecule. And so when you calculate delta H, delta H using these bond enthalpies, you only ever get an approximate value. If you want a more exact value, you should really use Hess's law or enthalpies of formation like we did in the chapter on thermochemistry. Uh, but, you know, nice to get a good quick approximation. It's not a bad approximation, but still an approximation using these bond enthalpies. Uh, so it turns out we add in all the bonds of the reactants, sum up all their bond energies, and then subtract out all the products. And the reason we're going to subtract right here is that we actually form the bonds in the products, and so it'd be the exact negative of these numbers here in the table when you form those. So we don't actually have to change the sign ourselves, the equation here changes it for you. So if you want to do all the bonds, if you can just isolate which ones are being broken, add all those together and then subtract off which ones are being formed, that would get you delta H as well. Sometimes that's faster, especially when a lot of the bonds aren't involved in the chemical reaction. So let's take a look at this problem here. Uh, I've got a typical chemical reaction here, and the reason we couldn't talk about bond enthalpies earlier, like in the thermochemistry chapter, is we haven't learned yet how to write structures, these Lewis structures we've been spending the whole chapter on. Um, so now that we know how to do the structure, we could answer such a question, and the first thing you do in a question like this is you go and you draw out the structures of every reactant, every product, to see which bonds are being broken and formed. All right, so here we've got our lovely structures. So in a nice, lovely computer program, draw them out. Uh, and in this case, we can kind of keep track of all the bonds here. So we can see that in the reactant side here, we've got these lovely NH bonds that are going to get broken. Um, and in this case, or we could just add them all in together. And there's four of those. And it's going to cost 391 kilojoules per. So we'll multiply that by four. We've also got to break this nitrogen-nitrogen single bond. If you notice your nitrogen-nitrogen single bond here versus the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond. So the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond is not simply triple the nitrogen-nitrogen single bond. So you might just look at this and be like, oh, we just made two more bonds between the nitrogens and you know, add in two times 163. It does not work that way. You've got to treat them separately. We're going to treat this as breaking this one and then making the triple bond. Uh, so in this case, that nitrogen-nitrogen single bond will add in 163. So, and then finally, we've also got to make this oxygen-oxygen single bond as well, one of those, and that's another 495. And so this is the sum of all the bonds in the reactants, and then we'll subtract in the sum of all the bonds in the products. And the products, we've got this nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, that's 941. So, and then we've got these OH bonds at 463, and there's four of those, so we'll add those in. Cool, and this lovely calculation will simply get us a nice approximation for delta H. So if we add up all the bonds here that are being broken, we're gonna get a grand total here of 22, 22. And if we add up all the bonds that are being formed, we're gonna total of 27, 93. And so delta H would just simply be, again, all the bonds in the reactants minus all the bonds in the products. So here we can see that all the bonds that are being broken is gonna require the absorption of 2,222 kilojoules of energy, but all the bonds that are going to be formed is going to release quite a bit more energy than that 2,793 kilojoules. And so overall, we're going to end up with an exothermic reaction here. And if you work out the math here, delta H is going to equal negative 571 kilojoules. Cool. And this is kind of just a typical application of using bond enthalpies to calculate delta H here.